All right, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Broken Roads. I've been extremely excited for this one. Not really sure what I'm heading into. I believe it's like a narrative RPG. What I do know, however, is it's had comparisons to games like Disco Elysium. So it's definitely something I had to check out today. Not much in the way of options. I did take a quick look. Nothing really graphical you can change. So yeah, let's get into it. Hard yakka, what a great word. No idea what it means, but yeah. Okay, so four classes to choose from. Hired gun, group with a gun in your hand, attribute bonuses, awareness, strength, starting skill, shooting, mastery, opportunist. I do like the sound of that one. I know it is possible to play the game with no violence at all. Won't be going that route myself. Uh, Sophia, awareness and intelligence, vigilance and punts. Barter, crew, charisma, resolve, leadership, biology. That's probably a good one if you just want to kind of talk your way through the game. I know it's kind of a narrative-led RPG. And then Jackaroo, resolve, strength, tinker, and biology. All right, let's go with hired gun, shall we? Then appearance, we've got eight characters. Four male, four female. No customization, unfortunately. Um, all right, let's go with this dude. Continue. All right, introduction to the Moral Compass. The Moral Compass shows a 360 degree view of possible dialogue options, attitudes you can hold, and decisions you, you can make throughout your journey. It is divided into four parts utilitarian, nihilist, Machiavellian, and humanist, with the golden arc representing your worldview often overlapping different quadrants. Where a decision lies is not always clear cut and the borders matter. It's entirely possible to be a utilitarian focused on the greater good for all, which will suit options in that quadrant close to the humanist border. Likewise, you can be within the utilitarian quadrant, but tending far more to focus on the interest of your own group with decisions ten tending towards the Machiavellian border. Broken Roads doesn't reduce things to simple right and wrong or good and evil, and this is reflected in how you can handle the scenarios you face on your journey. Okay, so basically we've got what? Top half is, let's call it good, bottom half bad. Um, yeah, kind of like, I guess, skeptic down the bottom almost. All right, let's go. Your worldview. The golden arc in the center represents your worldview. Each decision you Make can affect your position on the compass, rotating the world for you slightly towards the decision you have made. At the center of the compass are the brightly illuminated areas and moral tendencies, which allow your characters to make lower level of moral decisions or expressions of ideas that would otherwise fall outside of their world view. Note that the further a decision is from the center of your world view, the larger impact it will have on shifting it. Plus, the more decisions you make close to the center of your world view, the more narrow-minded you will become, allowing you to make higher-level decisions. Conversely, selecting a wider range of choices will make you, you broad-minded, often allowing more options, but making certain higher-level decisions and moral traits, perks, unique to characters of a particular alignment that can affect dialogue or combat skills and are failable. So basically, you can be an all-round kind of individual, or we can just kind of focus in on one style and get what sounds like perks that really kind of lock us in there as well. And then the four moral quadrants. Okay, so now it's giving you an explanation of each. Humanist, each person's dignity matters most. I choose all meaning and I choose all meaning and thus what matters, but what is 
Inalienable is that every person has worth. For the humanist, each person's dignity matters most simply through existing as a being experiencing the world. Utilitarian, everyone's happiness combined matters most. So the greater good. Machiavellian, my group matters most. The ends justifies the means if it favours our pursuits and maintenance of power. Then finally, nihilist, I matter most. Given there's nothing outside of each individual human experience, nothing ultimately matters and that doesn't bother me. Thus, for the nihilist, I matter most. Cool. All right, so let's see. Question, you just picked up a job to escort a captured thief. You get to talking and he tells you the sad tale of how he came to be captured. Sounds like he was not really the perp and actually makes a pretty good case for his innocence. He begs you to free him. So it's going to tell us the options here. Let him go free, you'll argue his case and at least prevent an innocent man from enduring mob justice. There will always be more jobs down the track. You've been paid to do a job and you plan to see it through despite the appeal. And potential innocence, prioritise your reputation and ensure you get paid. Promise him you'll plead his case. It doesn't serve anyone's interest to execute an innocent man. And it doesn't serve you as if he is in fact guilty. The best you can do is assure justice and your rep stays intact. Tell him to make an offer. You won't get the other offer you'll pay if you get to Brockton without him. And if you help him escape, your reputation as a hired gun could take a hit. I'm going to go utilitarian with this one. After a series of raids on caravans passing near your home, you put together a scouting party. You've caught a bandit leader and one of his raiders. The leader pleads for release, pledging to comply with your terms. Do you free him? Um... Yeah, let's take him back to town. All right, so a nearby townstead has a new chief and he's starting to flex his muscles. He sends an envoy with a threat, pay tribute or suffer his wrath. He clearly has the military strength to back it up. Ah, kill him. Do you pay him no chance? If he thinks he can take it, let him come. You're not scared of his threats. Negotiate with the envoy and escort him back. Concealed, your top fighters follow into town, publicly ex execute the envoy, displaying his head on a spike, warn the others to surrender their chief or face the same fate. Might be a little bit over the top putting his head on a stick. Send scouts to see if he can enforce his demands. If he can, pay up. If he can't, Send him a mocking reply and dare him to come take it. Uh, war hurts everyone and maybe you can work out a way to be of mutual benefit. Uh, let's do... kind of want to chop his head off to be honest. Let's chop his head off. Screw it. A child in the village has started showing symptoms of the plague. The town cho chose to quarantine him and his family, but you caught him sneaking out of the house to play with other kids. What now? Let him go with a warning. If he's contagious, you're all infected now too. If he's not, no harm done. Rally some neighbours and affect the entire family from town, make an example of their carelessness. Send him back to his house under careful guard. The whole family will have to leave town if they continue to put everyone at risk. That's a good one, yeah. Question five. You've been captured by people who've clearly gone mad, finding yourself in a pen along with a dew farmer you've met before, a mercenary stripped of his weapons and a terrified young family. The captures assemble a massive pyre, indicating their intent for a twisted sacrifice. Noticing a guard's distraction, you're certain you can escape on your own, but every person you bring with you increases the chances you will get caught. Take advantage of the distraction to try to get everyone out, saving as many as you can. Slip away on your own, the others will simply have to fend for themselves. Convince the merc to come with you, the dew farmer can likely find his own way out, but the family will be nothing but a liability. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Let's get the family out first. We've got guns. We can do our thing. All right, the last question. You've discovered a cache of pre-apocalypse supplies in an abandoned farmhouse. You can't carry it all back on your own, so you enlist a few friends from town to help. When you return to the cache, you find a group of emaciated scavengers in the process of looting the place for themselves. Do you let them take the supplies? No way for it and the scavengers, and if they don't hand over the supplies, kill them. Let them take the supplies, but secretly follow them back to their home. Once there, you can loot their other goods and kill them all. Damn, that's brutal. Let them go, they're starving and clearly need the supplies more than you do. Plus, they had no way of knowing you found them first. Tell them you found the place first and offer to split the takings. Better to get less than you wanted than to spill blood or get nothing at all. Okay, how much do we need? Though It doesn't really give me an indication of, like, do we really need these supplies or... Um, let's split it. Thank you. Please enjoy playing through your origin story. Okay. 
Attributes and skill trees calculated from tube attributes, fortitude, strength and agility, temperance, resistance and something, wisdom. Okay, each origin story comes with unique bonuses for hide guns. Those are plus one to strength and awareness for a minimum of two in each attribute, plus 10 to shooting mastery, plus five to opportunist. In the example to the right, with 18 resolve and 13 in awareness, all skills in the temperance tree start off at 21. Shooting mastery has a bonus of 10 from the hired gun's background. In combat, movement points are derived from agility and strength, while action points are determined by agility and intelligence. Keep that in mind when distributing attribute points, okay? The punt skill. One of the unique skills in Broken Road Roads is the ability to have a punt, essentially taking a risk on something uncertain. Your player character has a pool of punt points they can draw on if they need to attempt a skill check that they fall just short of, or if they want to increase the accuracy of a particular attack in combat. Punt is derived from charisma plus any additional points added to the punt skill. Each additional skill point doesn't directly equal one additional punt point, however. The skills attain different effects whenever a threshold is reached. In this example, the character has a rank 2 punt skill. Increasing their punt from 32 to 50 would place them at rank 3 and so on. Okay. It's kind of like a buffer, I guess, right? Of sorts. Okay, so how many skill points am I working with here? Ten, ten, ten to spend. I want to go with some charisma here. And some strength. Power and energy affects melee damage, health points, movement points, and intimidation checks. What's this here? In endurance and toughness affects health points, damage reduction, and resistance to sense. Status conditions, yeah, I think, let's go here, let's go 8 on you, 8 on you, intelligence, affects action points, initiative, intimidation, checks and resistance to certain status conditions, so we've already got intimidation over here, movement points, initiative, critical hit, I like that, okay, so, and then awareness, perception and insight affects range, damage, accuracy, critical hit, chance, dodge and helps to fight ambushes. Charm and appeal affects number of pump points and persuasion checks. Yeah, let's go like that instead. Okay, now skills. Um, thirty to spend. I'm going to go with auto assign here just to see what it does. Okay. Let's just start our journey with that. Okay. I'm excited for this one. This should be good. Well, hopefully it's good anyway. Hey, Jake. The Sunday haired man's face is sunbeaten and craggy. A testament to a life lived in the bush. Continue. Not yet. Um, yeah, that'd be good. Cheers. She looks at you almost as if she pities you. It's a bit rude. I'm sure your sparkling personality will shine through and you'll win a place in his heart in no time, Ella. That's me, noted heartbreaker and charmer. She's so deadpan, she almost seems serious. You fancy seeing the place? Meet the colourful locals? Ready whenever you are. So you've already met the bus. That leaves Jonesy, Dreamer and Mad. May as well say hi to Cole too, seeing as you'll be escorting him. Alright, to move your character around the map, left click on an area. White circles will appear on the ground to show what your character and party members are walking towards. The left click is also used to speak to other characters and interact with certain objects in the world. To indicate this, your mouse icon will change depending on what you're hovering over. To pan your camera, you can either push your mouse against the edge of the screen, use the WASD keys, or hold down the middle button, mouse button and drag it in any direction. Alright, 
important tab. To the bottom left of your screen, there's six icons. From left to right, they are party, inventory, character sheet, moral compass, journal, map, and menu. Click on each icon for further information. You can also access the learn menu via the journal to read more about the features of Broken Roads. All right, cool. Let's uh, zoom out a bit here. Where are we going? Meet Cole. Who's this then? Oh, okay. Guess this is where we want to go. Ella calls out as you near a young man elbow deep in a pile of, of electronics. Oi, call. Cool. The gangly young man. The gangly young man hurriedly wipes his hands on his coverall when he sees you. His carrot orange hair flops over his eyes. It gives you a broad grin. So it seems they've used voice actors for maybe the first few lines of each character, just add a dash of personality, and then it kind of fades away. Oh, she just proved me wrong. She started talking again. That's bloody fantastic. I'm just about done with the repeater array here and should be powering up with the solar panels in no time. Get your scouts back up and on the network in a jiffy. It's all, it'll all get sorted once I can hit the market in Cockabee and why can we highlight those? Oh, that's funny. Just some, uh, I guess, we'd say jiffy and sorted in England as well, but I guess translation for those that don't. All right, cool. Shorts up a hand. Steady there, Christmas. I was just making an introduction. One thing at a time. You raise all the side yet. Redhead. See also Renga. All right. Oh, crikey. No, not yet. That's why I mentioned Kakabe. See, your modulators are shut and I don't have a spare. So it's a good thing we're headed up there. So it's broken. Once I get that modulator, everything else is golden, good, and you'll be right as rain. Sorted, basically. Or ready to go. Um... When do you want to head out? Wally steps back and looks at his tools, the radio, and the solar panels. I reckon whenever you're ready to go. I can clean up real fast. Meantime, I'll keep working on projects around here. Got nothing really pressing back in Brookton, I don't think. Okay. I can catch you later, Cole. Sounds good, mate. All right. Um... Anything down here? So I'll take it I can't rotate the camera. It's just this one angle. Ella, she raises her hand to the young woman as you, as you approach her. Dreamer, give the fresh meat a wave, will ya? Fresh meat for dinner? You know I gave up human flesh, Ella. I'm Mishti. They call me Dreamer. Um, why dreamer? Ella's nicknamed for me, yeah. Uh, made the mistake of telling her my plans to hike across the new labor, and she told me I was an impossible dreamer name stuck. Yeah, not a bad problem to have. It was a joke, sure, but I like the name. I like the role. Seems like dreams are in short supply these days, yeah? We've got to have something to look forward to. Yeah, don't blame you. Post-apocalypse and all that good stuff. Um, if we don't have dreams, we don't have anything. It's a good name. I like that. She beams. You're all right, mate. Anyway, my job here, such as it is, consists of two main gigs. What I do best is convince people to save their bullets. I defuse fights, make sure people get along, keep their blood inside their skins. Good thing to do. The other job, cleaning up this mess. Um, I think that sounds like a good one, yeah. Like a negotiator. She beams exactly right. If we're looking to get civilization rolling again, we can't just settle our problems by making more corpses. Seems reasonable. Not, mind you, that some people don't deserve to be slapped around. And I'll be right there to hand some slaps out. Um, anything I can help with? That's really kind of you to ask. As a matter of fact, I could use a hand with a couple of things. And Jake wanted you to get some time in at the firing range. Make sure you're as good as you say you are, you know? Last fellow was a bit of a legend in his own lunchbox, and now he's dead. I mean, in his own mind, I presume. Arrogant without cause, okay. Better to know up front if someone's aim is a bit shit. Corpses aren't so great at self-improvements. She turns around to survey the encampment. Let's say Jake wants you to get your gun hand warmed up. Then I need some scrubs cleared out of paddocks and a tub filled with water. Easy peasy. Um, 
If that's all, I should get moving. All right. You can press an old tab to highlight items, plan of interest, and show NPC names. Nice. Cool. All right. What's this here? I just... She gestures to, the, gestures to the roof of the hall. Look up there in the crow's nest. That's my sister, Mad. She'll be staying behind when the rest of us range out on our jobs later. Crow's nest. The woman in the watchtower wears drab brown clothes, loose and comfortable. Her face is hard, her build muscular. She looks like she wrestles Ruse for fun. She scales down from the makeshift turret. I would not wrestle a room. Are you babysitting Ella? Or is she sitting you? Is she sitting you, babysitting you? Um, I'll keep an eye on her for you. Hope you do a better job than the last one. Poor fucker. Like I'm the one who needs a sitter, mad. Wasn't that long ago I was changing your nappies. You ready to move on, meet the others? Fuck you, Ella. Hey, before you go, new kid, I need you to make sure the perimeter's secure before you all head out. Don't want any unpleasant surprises. Uh, Ella, what do you think? Oh, yeah, Ella's not fucking telling you I am. Get out there and secure my fucking perimeter. Don't question her. She says she needs something checked. We're going to check it. I want you to walk a circle around the outside of the fence. Check it for holes. If a dingo can fit through, call it out and we'll patch it up. No need for you to get your precious hands dirty. Just need your eyes. Um, I'll get the job done. No need to take an attitude. She barks, attitude, mate. I'm being friendly. You'll know when I've given you attitude. Now, don't you have a job to do? Jeez. Mads. Mad, I guess. I just got the reason. Right, where now? I guess we're meeting Jonesy one last one, and then we'll uh, do you Jonesy, I guess. Here we go. Alex. New gun for the good guys, eh? Glad to hear it. You ever use your weapon on a person before? Um, not yet. Hoping I don't have to. Bad news, mate. You cho chose the wrong line of work for that, especially if Jake hired you. Means he's worried about something. But he wouldn't have done it if he didn't see something in you. Cool. Pulls down the top of his shirt to show a nasty scar running across his chest. Here's how she repaired me. Repaid me, sorry, repaired me. <laughs> like he's a droid. Uh, he shakes his head sadly. When they've sunk that low, the only help from is hot lead. Um, what if we organize supply drops so they weren't so desperate? Maybe they could help rebuild. Surely we can find a way to help them. I like your idealism, but let me tell you, from hard years of experience, it's going to get you killed. Believe me, out here, you act fast or you die slow. Hate to ruin this heady discussion, but I'm supposed to keep squiring our friend here around. You and Jake are headed back to Brookton after our decide, yeah? You're going to swing by and see me, old man. Got to update him on the kill count. Um... Yeah, I gotta break a few eggs. All right, mate, chill out. All right, mate. Watch out for her. She's secretly not always mean. Bull bullshit, I'm made of mean. Anyway, like I said, we've got to keep moving. You have anything more to talk to Jonesy about? Uh, let's get the target practice done while we're here, shall we? Uh, actually, let's go back to boss man first. Uh, it's a beer runner. There we go. Let's see how far can we see me? Nice. Uh. 
Uh, bit of a shuttle. That'd be great. Uh, place out of the world. Decorate it yourself. You'll be going with him back to Brookton, Jonesy, and me will meet you there once we've finished up in Alderside. Uh, don't head out just yet. I'll be back. That's fine. I want to... Uh, I got a few jobs to do, don't I? Is it my journal? Your trusted journal records any currently active main quests and side quests, updates objectives, and keeps track of completed quests along your journey. So I had a few. Let's do these quickly. Can I somehow assign this as my main? Is that now? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Refill of the water in the bathtub near the camel paddock. Okay, so let's do this. There's only a small amount of grimy water left in the tub. Those camels are going to need something to drink and soon fill the tub with fresh water. Easy. You quickly fill the tub, providing clean drinking water for those noble beasts. You're already a real hero. I'm not sure about that. Um, clear the scrub from the camel paddock. Is that this? What is scrub exactly? Oh, pup. This scrub looks like it's invading the camel's enclosure and they're having trouble resting without getting pricked. It wouldn't take you long to clear it out. Remove the scrub. Scrub looks like it's... Oh, the uh, job only takes a few minutes and the paddock is cleared. The scouts will no doubt be happy with your handiwork. I'm sure the, uh, I'm sure the camels are happy too, aren't they? And then now we need to do some target practice. Hey there, Shula, what's going on? Talk to you about target practice. For sure, let's get on it, and you can show us what you've got. All right. Get stuck into it. Different weapons are more effective depending on the distance from the target. Pistols and shotguns work well up close. Rifles from a medium distance, and sniper rifles better from a little further away. Experiment with different weapons at varying distances to work out the optimal range. Your shooting mastery and dead eye skills will also affect damage and accuracy as you improve them. What do you say for pistols then? Pistols and shotguns work well up close. Okay. Uh, what we what we using here? We've got a sniper rifle, so we should be good. Okay. Oh, that was terrible. Not enough action points. And turn. Bloody hell. My aim is useless. Am I supposed to be moving? Okay. And turn. Nice game. Okay. I would like to switch weapon, please. Maybe not. How the hell am I missing absolutely every shot? Maybe I go over here. I could not be closer. Could not be closer to you. Finally. There's infinite ammunition in broken roads, but reloading does come at the expense of action points with the amount of AP consumed depending on a specific weapon. Below your equipped weapon, you can see each remaining round as a bright bullet icon. They are currently all dimmed as your ammo is spent. So now I need to reload, right? None of action points, okay. Reload.
Take some cover. Oh, he's not going to be happy with that performance. That was embarrassing. Not bad, mate. Good to have you on board. Hey, Ella, you might not be the resident traps shooter much longer. Do you see them? That's shooting. She can't hit anything if that's the case. She says, nothing but gives drones you the most tired of your shit stare you've ever seen. Told Dreamer her jobs are done. All right, let's get this done. Uh, Dreamer. How's the work training yet? Um, finished everything. Bloody fantastic. Great work, mate. Definitely owe you one. Remind me at the pub later on, would you? Here you go. You've saved me a ton of trouble. Anything else today? I think let's just leave it there. I think I definitely want to do the... I definitely want to do the mission regarding the outer perimeter because I feel like it might be early, but this is a sort of game where if you don't do something like that, then someone's going to break him. Matt asked me to check the perimeter for weak spots. All right, so is that like... So, I like it. All right, so do I have to go outside, I presume? I was hoping I could check from the inside, but clearly not. Okay, how do I... I'm at the west. Is this the west? I don't know. I'm at one of the sides. I think it's this here, surely. I hear something. Bloody things falling apart. Mad will need to patch this one properly. I miss the you hear me? Tell Mad she's got a proper patch up job to do out here, would you? Oh, she's going to love that. Okay, let's move. Need to do a thorough check of the whole fence before we're done. All right, it's easy enough to literally just walk and it seems to kick in automatically. But do do down there. Love the music. It's very chill. Kind of gives me an air of um, Firewatch. It's got a banging soundtrack. You notice a piece of corrugated iron board coming loose. Hey, yellow luck. Well, looks like a loose spot over there. She takes a closer look at where you're pointing. Nice find. Reckon a new bolt or two is all she needs. This thing's been patched up since Jay's world, since before, I reckon. Might be there's not even a single piece of the original wall still here. Wall remains, though. Let's keep moving. Do, 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 do. Guys, catch you, that is. And we're done. Hold up. She stops and motions to a, sec a section of nearby fence. A small pile of dirt is next to a shallow hole. What do you reckon it is? Uh, looks like someone's been trying to dig their way in. Put a dog. Dingoes. Little bastards have been trying to dig their way in since Mishdi turned the place into a chook farm. But I reckon that's enough to keep mad off her ass while we're away. Nice work. Oh, you mad. Found three lovely jobs for you. Should keep you from falling asleep while we're gone. Mad snarls something unintelligible and turns away again. While your eyes work and you can follow instructions, so far so good. Right, let's head back and check in with the others. Call's gotta be done by now. All right. Um, let's go. Uh, let's go. Take call, I guess. Shall we? Just messing with the camera then a little bit, trying to see. Hey, mate, I'm about to head out to older side. You need anything else before I go? Nah, good look out there. I think we're about ready to go, yeah. Yep, we've wrapped up. We missed you. Mad ass. Let's get moving. Okay, best of luck with everything. We'll meet you in Brookton once we're done. Jonesy, grab your gear. We are rolling out. Same, we're on the way then. She said to the other two. Cold, dream out. Let's get on the road. You know the drill, Ella. Stay safe and don't be stupid. No wazzers. I'm going to guess no worries. Yep. Jake, none of the stupid leaked into my side of the family tree. We're all set.
All right. Sounds good, mate. Got it, Chief. See you later. Oh, this is a trap. This is. If ever I've seen one. Baby on board on the car. Okay. Hello, are you seeing the streamer? What do you think we should do? Say nothing. Shoot. All right. Ella's got the right idea. All right, you duck, let's go. Monsieur, a woman is sobbing over the body of a man lying sprawled in the dirt, bright blood stains his shirt and pulls in the dust on the road. Doesn't look up as you approach, trapped in the world of her pain. What happens? At first you think she isn't answering you, then you catch the fragments of words at the edges of her sobs. She looks up, wiping her face with the edges of her sleeves. Yeah, it's not our fault. How could we have known you were in trouble? You didn't shoot me already, so you are not entirely heartless, right? She looks at Ella. I've heard about you, the pale sisters, scouts. Why didn't you help us? She gives you a look, then steps forward to take command of the situation. What can we do? She stares at Ella a few seconds as if to assure her, assure herself that the pale woman is real. And my son, he shot Greg. Then he took the gun and he's a good boy. I can't lose him too. My son, he shot Greg, then he took the gun and... So, her own kid killed him? I don't know. What's your son's name? What do you think... What do you want us to do about it? We will go talk with him. Why did he shoot him? The woman doesn't respond. Right, we'll go, go have a little chat with him then. She nods at the boy sitting in the dirt behind the fence. Alright, mate. Why did he shoot your dad? Or this guy? Oh, hey, shit. He points his pistol loosely in your direction. Yeah, what type? Threaten. Yeah, so, so, so by. Why don't you put it down and we'll talk? Hold your, your empty hands. I'm not here to hurt you. Just take a deep breath. You don't understand that his arms seem to lower on their own free will. I just killed someone. He raises his arms again. They're shaking. I could kill you too. Who was the man? Did he attack you? No, you've got it all wrong. He was... I don't want to talk about it. Was it your dad? Mr. takes a step towards him. Hands up and empty. Hey, let's just have a chat, all right? I've got this mystery. Let me talk to him. It's okay. You can trust her. She says nothing, but you see her relax over so slightly. We've all done things we regret, right? One split second decision and it seems like it's all over. But it's not. You're still here and that means you have a chance to make it right. You don't know what happened. What I did, he gestures wildly with the pistol. Ella's expression doesn't change, but she widens her stance. I killed him, my own dad. So I was right, yeah. And all because he, he... She takes a step closer, ignoring the loaded pistol being waved in her direction. Hey, it's okay, what's your name? Why the fuck does it matter what his name is? This is going nowhere. Put the gun down or I'll shoot. And I remain silent. You're not responsible for what your dad did, Will. Her voice is soft, sympathetic. Ah, is he sick? Oh, don't do that, kid. Rush in and try to wrench the gun from his hand. That never works. I will shoot him in the leg, remain silent. Reach out a hand to stop him. Wait. Yeah. Remain silent. She won't make it if you're dead. You know that, Will. Good work, dreamer. His hands tremble within his arms. He drops the pistol and slumps to the ground. His head in his hands. If they get attacked, they're going to be defenseless. 
If we leave it all off himself, any idiot can see they've got nothing worth stealing except this. She puts the pistol now. Get out. Wriggle on. We're moving out. All right. See you later, guys. Cole, are you ready? All right. She's talking for me. Hey, she stops you with a gentle land on your arm. You did good back there. It's nice to meet someone else who's willing to believe that a bullet to the head won't solve all of the world's problems. Maybe they'll be in a positive position to repay the favor later. Sometimes we make bad decisions, but it doesn't mean we have to keep making them. I'm going to go for this one. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, she didn't like that answer. Let's keep going. This costs us some time. Cold, how important are those parts in Cockabee? Cockabee. Oh, uh, about a four out of ten, I reckon. It'd be good, but I can probably get Jess to drop them by next week sometime. Yeah, all right. Any objections if we head straight for Brookton? Um, I'm good either way. We won't lose out if we're in Brookton early, but being on the road from Cockabee to Cockabee, Cockabee, whatever it is, in the dark is a bad idea. She looks at the position of the sun again and shrugs, yeah, Brookton it is. Let's go. All right, cool. Another loading screen? Yes. I wonder if it's going to have any sort of cutscenes or anything like that. Right, well, here we are. All right. Mish can give you the guided tour. I only did it at Bali Bali because Jake asked. You've just leveled up. Open the character sheet to assign your one attribute point and ten skill points to your character. All right. Character sheet tab gives you detailed information on your character and party members, skills and attributes, and current experience level. This is where you'll assign your skill and attribute points when you level up. All right. I think I'm going to go with intelligence because we need something there. I think a little bit of wisdom. Um, and then skills, got 12 to spend. Um... I mean, after seeing my bloody shooting skills, it was embarrassing. So let's, uh, let's, yeah, did I, I think, yeah, let's just make sure we can bloody shoot the gun. Can I, okay, so I can't mess with your points yet, at least. All right, meet the Brookton residents. Lovely. Okay, but you're following me still. You said you didn't want to. Good day. New around here, eh? How are, how are you going, buddy? Let me see what you have for sale. Who are you? Where did you come in from? Who are you? I'm Bruce. Bruce Harris. Sell a bit of this, a bit of that. Mostly clean water. Some fresh produce. Have a look. Uh, just, uh, let me see what you got. When browsing a shop, you may see a number in the bottom right corner of an item indicating how many of that item are in a stack. To split a stack, right-click and drag to move one item from that stack around. There's enough here to wet your whistle for a while. Restore 6 HP and removes burning. How much cash do I have? We have 120 bucks. I'm kind of tempted to take some more water. Let's do that. Okay. Glasses. Can't see shit through these. That's good. Sharpen your tools and polish your jewels. Pine pitch. I'm just going to take the water for now. I'll do. Got a couple of grenades. We're ready. All right, that's one met. Man met. Um, bye. Keegan shop. So this is just another stall. So how do I know who is I'm supposed to be talking to? Fender, Fender. Okay, Fender, Fender. So we need someone with a name, don't we? Down here. Bloody hell, it's a big town. Hey, his face is deep and pleasant. If you're here to help out, we're glad to have you. Who are you? Sean Taylor at Taylor's Farms. Pleased to meet you. Um, what do you do? I work the farm with Dad and help keep Brookton fed. It's a busy life, that's for sure. 
Need anything? Nah, he's stretching for good. Nothing a good night's sleep won't fix. All right, see you later. I don't really uh, care too much. All right, what are you doing up here? Low, he keeps watching the horizon, occasionally glancing down to check if he's still there. Who are you? What a way to introduce to yourself. Name's Dane. Watch the flocks by night, real or biblical. What are you doing? I mean, watching. Tell you, if they'd had me here this morning... Okay. Those raiders would have never got off with a single sheep. I told Sarah I'm fine to sleep up here, but she said she wouldn't have it, that a bed is the only proper place to rest. Well, you tell me, how many raiders you think would have gotten away if I'd been on watch? Uh, ten. <laughs> oh, it's a joke. Give old Dane a little credit, Eos. It would have been zero, and you know it, and you can take that all the way to the bank. Um, Sorry, where's the bank? Big place, fancy steps. Gave my old mum a free coin catcher. Duvalaki, when she said she was a kid. Shaped like a platypus. Platy bank, you know? Kids these days. All right, see you later, mate. Here it is. You Cadbury? Love Cadbury's chocolate. Does that mean, like, you, you good, maybe? Tired, maybe? Sounds about to set. All right. I was hoping we could hit the pub, check in on Jake and Jonesy. Sounds good. Let's go to the pub. All right. Wait, who's this? Oi, where are you going? Oh, I can't, can't talk to you. Hello? Always happy to see a new friendly face out here. I hope the road's been treating you well. Yeah, we'll leave that for now. All right. Doesn't seem like you can talk to them when they are moving. They have to be stationary. Does it look like I wanted to go over here, right? Yeah. There he is. You must be the new hire out of Bally Bally. I am indeed. Mick Jones, de facto mayor of Brookton, though really the town runs itself. Watch out for this one, Mick. Negotiate it after your own heart. Really? Worth having a chat over a pint in that case. Each person paying for themselves, of course. Excuse me, I just need a moment of your time. The speaker is a tall, broad-shouldered man, well-groomed, with a gold necklace and gold bracelet glittering glinting in the sun. Despite his size, he moves with a fluid grace. He reminds you of nothing so much as a big cat, attractive, smiling, and dangerous as hell. Uh, I'll remain silent. It's pretty hell, then. My name is James Wakefield. I am glad to have met you, Mr. Jones, as I come bearing a proposition for you and your people. A proposition? Better make it quick, mate. Let me be plain, then. I come from a powerful community to the east. We're rebuilding civilization, and we'd like to invite Brookton to be part of that effort. Join us and we can make we can end the age of grubbing through the relics of the past. Join us and we can usher in an age of miracles. You want us to bow and scrape to someone who's never even looked our way before, who never had the good grace to come and say hello himself? Civilization. And what do we get out of it? Pray tell. Civilization will bring the rains. Fill these fields with wheat again. What happens if we say no? Um, rain We should hear him out as it may be benefit. Okay, let's do that. I don't remember asking for your opinion, mate. Eh, yeah, piss off. We've got nothing but your word to go by, mate. Show us some of these miracles if you're so keen to bring us into the fold. Mr. Jones, I was sent merely to make the offer. I'm a messenger, not a diplomat. If it's pretty words you're after, you're not the man I thought you were. Well, Mr. Not a Diplomat, why don't you piss off back home and tell your overlords that if they want us kissing their boots, they're going to have to prove those boots are worth the tongue. Till they can, answers a hard no. I must ask one more time. We can offer your people many things. Food, water, protection, freedom from want or care. The future in its limitless possibilities rather than scratching out a living on the edge of darkness. He said, no, weren't you listening? What kind of guarantees are you offering? Maybe we like the darkness. The only way anyone's free from want or care is if they're dead. And what's the cost of that protection? Absolute obedience. You're not the first to try that one on, mate. I like that. We wouldn't be the first to succeed either. No means no, now bugger off. Yeah. Remember those words. Remember too what I offered. The memory will prove quite enlightening in time. I don't know what you're talking, This, why you're taking this bloke seriously. Join this mysterious far-off community so we can, I don't know, all drive cars again. Mud and chops have been out in the sun too long, I reckon. Piss off, mate. 
No need to be rude. You've made your choice clear. My duty was to ask, and so I have done. Be assured that I shall sleep soundly tonight. A good evening to you all. I'll make sure Cole gets Bally Bally back up on the radio waves too, too sweet. We can't be offline if you need us in a pinch. Might be a good idea. Yeah, cheers. Tomorrow we can send someone to follow his tracks and find out where he came from. We'll get to the bottom of this. And join the club, mate. So you in the pub. All right, let's do this. Where's the pub? Is it here, I take it? It's got to be. It's what the, yeah, the Brookton Arms. Head to the pub and get your beers on. She nods, slapping the dust off her trousers. Everybody's running across to us. She seems unable to give her companion her full attention. Oh, uh, I was actually planning to head to the pub. Like you said, it's been a hell of a day. I'm parched. Nice. Don't be a bloody idiot. If you're having a night at the arms, we're taking the truck. You can walk back home. Ripper, see you in the morning now. He nods to all of you as he and Jonesy head for the pub door. Bit of a hike to Bali Bali, isn't it? What's a drink or two? Not like there's many cars on the road these days. Smart, better to walk than end up wrapped around a tree. Yeah, or to have a roo wrapped around you. Right, Mishli, let's pack it in. We've got a free ride home, and like I said, Maddal will be getting pissy about being left out all of the action. To be fair, I thought today would be less eventful, but yeah, time to go. Okay, look, Ella, I know you prefer to base your decisions on facts, so here goes. One, I swore I'd never say this, but you're not my mum. Two, I'm an adult and capable of making my own decisions. Tonight, I choose to hit the pub. Hey, fair play. And hey, there's point three. Listen, my mind's made up. I'm having a few drinks, not planning to get wasted. Cut me some slack. And mate, we saved that boy at Key Road today. Can you understand that? We saved an innocent life. That is worth a fucking beer in my book. Yeah, I think that's true. Besides, we did a lot of work for the community today. Let them celebrate with us a little. We're all in this together, after all. Plus, we know Taylor's farm was raided today. What if they come back? What if they want revenge? Brookton will need guns, and I'm happy to have a pint and then stand guards. If you want to defend the town, drinking's a bad idea. Dulls your reflexes. Eh, boring. You're absolutely right. Just don't drink too much. Can I leave now or... Remain silent. Brookton's got arm handled, Mishley. They don't need our guns here. Come on. Why are you so dead set on staying? Jonesy promised to buy me a beer. You know how I feel about free beer. You're pulling my leg, Jonesy. Kid, I've got stories about Jonesy that'll curl your pubes. Assuming you've got any. Uh, always a good idea to seize opportunities where you can find them. She's looking at your best interest. Yeah, I think Ella's been a bit of a pain in the ass, honestly. Why are you still involved in this conversation? Rough. At least you weren't trying to be my dad. I swear she's treating me like her little sister. Bloody hell. Maybe even her kid. Her real sister would kill her if she tried this crap. All right, pub o'clock it is. I'm going. I am indeed. Let's go. A beer can't hurt, right? Love the graphics, the style of it all. Um, I'm going to go over here. Head to the pub and get your beers. I mean, I want a beer then. Let's go. What can I get you? First drink's free if you promise to buy three more. Uh, does that scheme really work? Scheme? Mate, I'm just laying my terms out. Clear and simple. You want to drink or not? Uh, yes, please. Someone's got manners. She pours you a beer and slides it in front of your bottoms up. Head to the pub and get your beers on. I've done this. Talk to Mick in the pub. So Mick is... So I guess I can speak to all of these, but let's go to Mick. He's listening to Mishti's enthusiastic recount of the day's offence with half an ear and keeping tabs on the people in the bar with the other. Sally said you wanted to talk to me. You're going to buy me a drink? I'm going to get that one. Mate, you've got to pay more attention to the people around you. If I wanted to buy you a drink, I would have done Sally said you wanted to talk to me. I do, yeah. Are you ready to sit down and share a few points and have a yarn about how today went? Sure. So Jonesy, who's drinking his beer and simply raises his eyebrows by way of assent. 
Uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, let's go. Let's get down to brass tacks. Little Miss Mish has been spilling her guts about your exploits since Jonesy handed her a glass. Reckon you'd be interested in my take of how things went down on your first day with the scouts? Uh, only if I get to reciprocate. Turn about's fair play. I'll do you, then you can do me. You seem like you've got a good head on your shoulders, a realistic view of the world, give and take and whatnot. You're a hard worker, I'll give you that, but you're too quick to step in where you should be asking questions first. Mish is a charmer, all right, but she got you good. Getting you to do all that work for her, she's not going to learn it that way. And that's not even getting into what happened at Key Road. Go on. Um, you and Mishy make a good, great team. I don't know that I, I don't know that I've, I'd have been able to talk the kid down, but you did, and you should be proud. Even if the most you did was keep your pie hole shut, that takes tact too. Um. You're pretty rude to that Wakefield guy from before, but I hope he doesn't make you regret it. I very much doubt he can. Oh, that don't sound good, does it? Bloody mongrels. Let's show him what it means to tangle with Brookton. Let's rock. All right. Load screens are nice and quick. All right, where the hell am I going? There's like a, oh yeah, map, okay. So the map shows an elevated view of your current location with unexplored areas hidden beneath fog of war. It displays landmarks you've come across while in the area and helps you plan where to go next. Okay, so where the, okay, so mix up here, so let's go. Go, go, go. All right, Mick, what's going on, mate? You start shooting. I got two poor camels just standing guard. We're not leaving until we got a few more people clear. They spoke you at the same time. Let's go, Jess. Voice cuts through his son. Where are the others? Okay. Rescue five townsfolk. Hurry. All right, let's go back. Let's try and save five people, shall we? Why can't you bring five people from the pub? Drop down. All right. I'm going to come to you. Heavy pain. Go on, let's go. Oh, come on. So I can't go down there. So he's defending us. Who's this, who's this lad here? Let's do what we need to do and get out of here. Good enough bare hands. Sean needs help loading medical supplies into the ambulance. How are the tires coming, John? Thumbs up, get a wriggle on, we have to leave. Okay, let's do this. Come on, man. Get me out of here, man. Come on. Who are you? Mick's got the key. Mick, Mick. Where are you, Mick? Uh, okay, let's, let's go do this. Just is about to hand sever his arm, load of supplies, the sound of running feet reaches you. Jake runs out of the darkness, dragging Alana behind him. Bullets ping off the road in his tracks as he shoves Alana towards you. Wrenching his hand free of a grass, she lands against you hard, throwing you off balance. Take her and go, I'll find you. He's already running back towards the gunfire, dodging and weaving one shadow among many in the flickering dark. Jake, Alana pushes you away and runs after him. Uh, wait, let her go. The snow helps... Helping someone who doesn't want to be saved. Drag Jake will only get him killed. Yeah, that's true. 
You catch up with Alana quickly and grab her arm, um, let go of me. Her screams draw gunfire to your position and you feel a seeming line of pain as a bullet grazes your leg. Knock her out to save her life. You hit her in the temple with the butt of your gun and she sprawls face down in the dirt, unmoving. You drag her to the clinic. So it is a double take when she sees you carrying Alana. What did you do? She looks Alana over, then gestures irritably at the ambulance, put her in. Sean makes a nest for Alana in among the, amongst the jumbled boxes and gently places her inside. You, Sarah, and John get into the ambulance and you watch out the rear window as the flames of Brookton fade to a dull glow across the horizon. You said you and Sarah left by the South Gate. Might still be some supplies to collect. So he turns to you, Ella and Mad. Where do you want to start? Uh, mate, you tell me we should go to the market to look for the scouts. I'll check if any of the townsfolk made their way to the clinic. I'll go to the clinic. I'll go to the market. Let's check on Dead Ringer, the raider in the cage. Um, I'll go to the clinic. Good old Ella and Mad, it's on you to keep this young fella safe. We'll meet up at the cricket pitch. Be for a quick. All right, um, see him out again. Journal. Investigate the clinic. All right, cool. Can I, anything to loot? Nice. I will take all of you. I mean, you know, I'll rope here and all that. Um, okay. Is he dead? Oh, that's a shame. Seemed like a nice lad. Good riddance. Jeez. All right. Nothing here. There's the clinic. Immediately you can tell that the clinic has been picked clean. Any empty bottles have been smashed to the ground and multicolored kaleidoscope of wanton destruction. Fuck all left. You want to look around a bit or are we done here? Uh, let's take a few minutes to search, shall we? Never know. Can't hurt. At the back of a shelf, deep in the shadow, your questing fingers discover a parcel wrapped in wax paper. Pulling it out, you unwrap some long shards of bark. Whatever it is, Sarah wouldn't know what to do with it, right, Al? Ella doesn't reply. She pulled a gun out, that's not a good sign. Okay. Sharp crack of a gun, sharp referred both in the silence. Before you've even had time to fully process the scene, Ella and Mad are both sprinting towards the marketplace, weapons drawn. All right, let's go. Do, do, do. Is it gunplay time? Oh no, is that Jones, eh? He's against the ball with Jones's head leaning on his shoulder. He looks up as you approach and gently disentangles himself from his dead son and stands. Uh, 
And nothing to loot. All right, our drones is gone. No one get too emotional. But uh, our dreamer's dead. Was this supposed to happen? Was I supposed? To, did I go the wrong way and get into that ambulance and it screwed me? Her footsteps fall towards she approaches Mrs. Corpse. Her face remains an impressive mask as she examines the bullet wounds at throat, neck, and thigh. Two spots of colour rise in her pale cheeks as she consciously moves her fingers from the trigger of her gun to the guard. Matt says forward, her jaw sets in determination. Ow. Damn. Can't help but think it's my fault. Okay, let's get some loot, shall we? I think I screwed up. I really do. Only knickknacks and memorabilia remain. Anything else around here? Okay, let's go to J. Neither of the sisters slow their steps as they approach her cousin's lifeless body. Mad shifts her weight, and for a moment it seems like she might give him a kick for good measure, but she restrains, restrains her impulse after a glance at Ella. Yeah, it does suck, doesn't it? Fucking sucks. All right. Well, I can't help but think I may have screwed up a little bit here. Because realistically, pretty confident that I could keep those characters alive. Where are you at? All right, let's go. All right, Mick, where you at, mate? Wait, where's the cricket pitch? Oh, it's over here. Um, all right, Mick. We fucked up, mate. It's all gone to hell. Son's dead, cousin's dead, dreamer's dead. Damn. She's not lying there, that's for sure. Sounds like a plan to me. It's caravan time. Uh, Bali Bali Hall seems well fortified. Why can't we just stay there? I think you're blowing this a bit out of proportion. Why Meridim? Uh, why Meridim? Sturdy walls trained military. Uh, the recruits who don't take to the life of a scout end up back at hunters and collectors and they fill out the city's ranks. In fact, Mishdi always says, my have snapped shirt. What did Mishdi used to say? She said none of them could hold a candle to Jake, though quite a few might have held a candle for him. Sounds like the kind of romantic bull rubbish Mr. Dream up. She will Matt's hand with her own briefly, and then the moment is over. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I don't think we're gonna have time to bury anyone. We should move on as fast as we can. We don't want to get caught bare assed. Yeah. I appreciate all you've done for Brookton, Mick, but you're not in the right state of mind to judge that. These people deserve what little dignity we can return to them. Fair. Normally, I'd say we at least get let the dingoes take care of it, but yeah, I'd want Jake to bury me, I suppose. And I don't mind digging. And why should I swear that's a bit... I mean, it's a bit... The pain, you do it. Uh, we protect the living, or there will be more corpses to bury. The people at Bali Bali Hall need us and our guns. Oh, what do we do here? Do we persuade them not to bury their friends? I feel like they're going to hate us. Let's just skip this. Right, that's that then. You, she points at Ella, get to what carrying bodies over here so we can stick them in the dirt. You, she points at you, help her. And you, she points at me, go have a sit down. Um, do as she says, yeah, let's just, let's just, let's just do it, shall we? She shifts slightly, watching the horizon, hands on her gun. She 
She'd be laughing at what a bunch of sad sacks you all are. Um, she still owed me a beer. She was your heart. We have to get moving. Pity party's over. Damn, Mick. All right, where are we going now? I don't believe it. It's gotta be a hundred years since anything this big flew and who's got the chops to make jet fuel these days? So before we get into this, I do wanna say that last scene with the burial, there was a bug on the game. He actually started to play the cutscene that you just watched. And then he cut out and he put me back into that location. I had to click on Mick again, he was standing by the front entrance, and then it redid the burial scene and it got through the cutscene. So if you run into that issue, just basically redo that small, very small section. You'd have to reload or anything else, and then you should get through on the second attempt. Bit weird though, definitely. But anyway, so Sean, it's gotta be a hundred years since anything this big flew. And who's got the chops to make jet fuel these days? Hey, plane's a good sign, isn't it? I don't believe in coincidences. Any thoughts on what Sean and John are walking into here? Um, oh, whatever the story is, we can't have the convoy stopped here too long. It will be easy pickings because surely a plane crashes and something you see every day, they're going to be straight over. Exactly what I was thinking. All right, sounds good, mate. Oh, where are we going? Amazing, absolutely amazing. These have, haven't flown since before. How the hell did this get here? Not really a butte when it's crashed into the ground, is it? It'd be more impressive if it's just sort of like flying in the sky. In the sky. I'm sorry, who are you exactly? Name's Jarale. Jarale? But everyone calls me DJ. You must be Sean. Hey, your Jess told me heaps about you, including that uh, you don't get out too much, right? Hello, I mean, come here, I guess. Hello. Jess, Bob, and Dawn doing well. She's in the middle of talking to Sarah, but takes a moment to return the wave. So I guess we're here for the same reason. See a bloody big plume of smoke rising in the sky. You take a gander at what's burning. The door's completely jammed shut, but the wing's torn off. I didn't want to head inside alone, but now you're here. We've got safety in numbers. Yeah, let's have a crack at it. Um, What do you think, Sean? If Jess says he's good people, then he's good people. Beauty, wouldn't mind the company. Rode a camel myself all of the way here, and it wasn't the best conversationalist. Speaking of speaking, found this guy on the ground, but I can't make him squawk. DJ's joined our party. Feels like the batteries are missing. Yeah, we're shit out of luck. Might be able to scrounge them up. I'll ask around. Come on, Dad. We should see if Mum needs help treating the people with heat stroke. Yeah, all right. I guess you will tell us what you find at least. Fair dinkum. Real or true. Okay. Too right, mate. But yeah, let's take a look at this plane. It's something they haven't seen in a good while. Um, it's post-apocalyptic, of course. The planes are not really on their list. I guess are things to do, but um, cool. Let's explore the area around the plane, search the area for witnesses. Okay, can we get to the no physical handle and your fingers find no purchase around the edges? Doesn't look like anything. Okay, let's uh, see. Oh, 
Well, look, he points towards the break in the fuselage. Uh, two bodies lying motionless on the ground. Continue. That's for sure. Uh, I mean, shut up, throat cut. There's definitely no fire tools. You inspect both of the passengers, victims, you're unable to find a pulse, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. People have been known to live through all sorts of shit. Um, poke the man. Mate, if you're done disrespecting the dead, may I suggest we move on? Mate, I'd love to say different, but dead is dead. Uh, the man's eyes fly open and he gasps. Oh, there we go. He looks towards his companion, Jensen, and then he sees you in the coals and horror. Shoo, shoo. Drops a man's head in shock, the victim's eyes close once more, and his limbs go slack. <laughs> Alright, so we're dead this time. Alright, so maybe it's worth going through his pockets. Fire tools, one last time. Yeah, let's go through his pockets. A bit disrespectful, I'll check exactly one place, but that's it, what'll it be? Uh, we may as well see if they have anything we can use. They are dead either way. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, standard stuff really. See those people back there? She motions towards Mick and the rest of the convoy. They just lost everything. A few hurt feelings don't mean much compared to that. One place, make your choice. Um, I think it's pants. Nothing. Oh, some string, but that's all. Why stand on ceremony? He's dead. Check all his pockets. Come on. No means no. Yeah, not this time he doesn't. She pushes past him and briskly gives the cops a once over. Thank you, Mad. Waste not one knot. A small key slides out into the dust. Jack writes. He looks away in disgust. DJ, dude, you're not made for this world. Yep. All right. Can we? If there ever was anything in here, it's gone now. Yep. Okay. Let's have a look at my stats quickly. So we've got one to spend. I'm going to go with intelligence. And then we're looking pretty good from a weapon perspective, I think. Melee and what's biology? Effectiveness of healing items now. Okay, let's do that. That's good. Gains initiative. Confirm. All right. Let's pull the area around the plane. Yeah, I wish I could rotate the camera though. Oh, it's a root. Investigate the plane here. There's no visible handle on your fingers. Find no purchase around the edges. Doesn't look like anything could pry that open. Hmm. The lid of the container has been forced open. Whatever was inside is long gone. Let's go. Okay. How the hell do I. And I can't go in the plane. Beaten to death by the looks of things. Yeah, thank you. Can we not search her out as well? Let's try and walk on the wings. Hmm. Wind whistle through the tattered glass, lifting what looks like the sleeve of a shirt. Hmm. 
There's got to be a way for me to. Oh, that's one bomb. Party inventory shows your party's equipped items, money, and goods you collected along your journey. This serves as a shared stash of items, but it's not accessible to women combat, so be sure to equip your character's weapons and utility items before battle. To equip and unequip items, that's yeah, simple. Okay, close. Do I have any way of. Got a shotgun, pistol, and okay. cam. Let's go talk to him. Thank you. I'll let you have myself a woman in, you come back with a new best friend. He glares at you. Who's this? Bludger, and why is he trailing you like a lost puppy, lazy person? DJ, good to see you. He's the one who helped me apply the suppository to Bob back when he ate the hisian sack full of copper wiring. I suppose, if anything, that's you a temporary spot with our crew, it's having had your hand stuck up Bob's ass. This is temporary, right? Um, should make it, let him make his own case. Now, good, reckon we'd be going our separate ways once we reach the big smoke as it is. Uh, anyway, we've got bigger fish to fry. What do you uncover about the plane? There's two bodies outside the fuselage recently killed. Not that they were in that thing when it came down. Didn't look like they were from around here, at least. Strange looking clothes and their hands were too clean. One of them had a key in his boot. She looks at Mad, who nods ever so slightly. Haven't found the lock it fits yet, though. No shit, mate. So these are all our cars, right? Yep. Yeah. So. Another door. Deceased woman. Deceased man. Nothing in the boxes. This is not letting me do anything. Oh here, yeah. what's this? You peer through the torn fuselage, wreck seats fading to the dimness, but you can make out the open door to the cockpit and a clear passage through. You could easily hoist yourself up and enter the down plane from here. Yeah, let's do it, come on. You climb up and walk past empty seats. The acrid stench of the engine smoke hangs thick inside the fuselage as you make your way towards the cockpit. Inside are two bodies still strapped to their chairs. The blood pool below them, still dripping from fingertips, reveals how fresh this scene is. But the pilots are still left for some cold. It looks like a bad crash tonight. Boxes and small containers lie strewn in the aisle. Aside from the pilots up front, the other seats are empty. Such cockpit. Look over there, says Allah. Pinting out the cockpit window that uh, to the southeast, you peer through and see a small, dishevelled building, likely an old abandoned cattle station, worth closer look she adds. It's probably how the lockbox ended up outside, though you doubt the impact of the line would have popped it open. Take a closer look at the pilots and their breathing, their pulse only the slowly dripping blood not yet dried. DJ steps closer and kneels next to each in turn, checking their heads, necks and arms. Cold, he says, probably from the moment this thing came down. He glances outside involuntarily, not murdered like those two outside. This place has been ransacked. Ella's voice rings loud in the silence. Whoever did it might still have been nearby. We need to search the area. Either they'll have more clues or they'll have at least seen what happened. Search the boxes. Other than some more serious denting around the corners, their locks have clearly been pried open. Someone's been in here as well. You turn back past the rows of seats and climb out the torn. Fuselage, okay. Explore the area around the plane. I mean, here we come. How big is this bloody area? Um, maybe over here somewhere? Okay. Search the area for witnesses, search the, explore the area around the town. Okay, so let make sure we haven't missed anything over here. Good, very good. Yeah, okay, so let's go over here. We have a kangaroo.
Oh, it's going to go over here. Here we go. Nice. Here's our witness, potentially. This pudgy, frightened man wears ill-fitting stained clothes. He's been living hard, apparently. He spreads his hands to show there's nothing in them. To his credit, his voice hardly trembles. Good day, mate. Name's Omar, Ruben Omar. I'm a Sophia by trade and a scavenger by circumstance. Please don't kill me. I'm totally unarmed. What the hell happened here? I was exploring nearby when we heard this guy all fall to sound. Saw this huge thing plummet and figured, hey, salvage. Why not check it out? He's talking fast now, almost panicked. Maybe get some loot I could sell, you know, maybe maybe get some tucker. Turns out I wasn't the only one to have that idea, though. I snuck away when the Mongols arrived. Indeed. I was sussing out the front of that thing when they drove up. They grabbed those two poor people from inside the plane, took them, and I just hid. I looked into the plane, but the dust has settled. Is the something else you saw before we got here? What you mean besides the bloodthirsty gang beating two innocent people to death, looting a plane and almost giving me two heart attacks within the same hour? Good point. Yeah, besides that, any and all information is helpful. Think details. Look, I didn't see everything, right? How could I, hiding behind this building, trying not to end up like those passengers? But uh, I did hear something. Right before the engine revving and them leaving, one of their mob was moaning about how heavy the package was. Look, that's all I know. Don't really want to talk about this anymore. Gonna have nightmares enough already. Um... Found empty lockbox. Yeah, so you see, mate, I saw that and I mean, oi, mad cuts him off sharply. Whatever it is, looks like the end of your story is in that bag. Hoping it, we already know you took something worth stealing or that you would have told us up front what it was. Swallows hard and fishes into his satchel. He pulls out a gold nugget the size of two fists. This, I'm just happy that at least I got away without those Mongols taking this. Where did you find that? It was in one of the boxes out front of the plane. I found it before the Mongol showed up. Reckon I might be able to use it to buy myself a good life back in Meriden. Give up surveying. Uh, keep it right here, then. I don't care. Uh, what, mate? Are you serious? Yeah, mate. Are you serious? You got to achieve no one will catch so much as a glimmer until we're safe inside Meriden's walls. I promise. Matt's not happy. Nice move, mate. Inspiring generosity. You've certainly done your good deed for the day. Now, if that's everything, I want to give the plane another go over before I call it quits. Goodbye and thank you, you bloody legend. I'm going to see if I can find anything those Mongols missed at the plane. All right. Well, we still got to check the area. Uh, no one lived here for quite some time. Shadow's no use when your nearest water source is kilometers away. What's this here? Uh, scrap. Water, knife, and radio power. Yeah, I'll take all of that. Do, do, do. Can I just go down here? Okay. Well, what can you tell me? Uh, we searched inside the plane. Two dead pilots, some ransacked boxes and containers. The thing has been thoroughly picked over. A shame, but to be expected, we found a witness scavenger named Reuben. Picking through the wreckage already? Bunch of fortures, can't stand them. Everyone's got to make a living some mate. Sure they do, some are just better at it than others. Reuben said the RF crew took something very heavy from the plane. Interesting, any chance he's bullshitting? Doubt it, guy looks scared out of his wits, happy to just be alive, and that we didn't shoot him. Yeah, I reckon he was in shock. Poor fella's t telling the truth. Um... I was thinking, I liked Ruben. He's a solid surveyor in a pitch, patch of bad luck. He'll have a better chance to pull himself together back in Meriden. All right, go get the bludger. God, you're a pain in the ass, you are. Like, go do something yourself once, dipshit. All right, let's get him to join the crew, see what he wants to do. No? Okay. Change your mind about letting me come with you by any chance? Where did they go? They put the packs off south of, of here. Probably back to Ardith, mate. Um, to do. There we go. 
ready when you are. So that's done. All right, so now what the hell are we doing? Let's explore the area around the plane, but is that like auto done after this maybe? Mick, Jess, snakes up here. Couldn't go explore down here. Well, what can you tell me? That's all I've found so far. All right, let's see then. You can't point off his fingers as he goes. We know whoever was here took something heavy, but not who they were or what they took. Have you really had a check around? We can't spend all day here, but I expected you to find more than this. Um, I could lie. Let's go and look around quickly. Let's go over here. Just quickly. Avoid that snake. Hey, what's this? Looks abandoned just as well. No one was working nearby when the thing came down. Well, yeah, it's a big old area. Oh, there's a rope. Um, I really feel like I've checked it, I think. But this is the edge of the map at this point. No. I'm calling it. Where is I? We are ready to leave, mate. Let's get out of here. Not perfect, but you know what? We got the majority, let's get out of here. All right, let's see then. Cats Mafias. That's pretty thorough, if you say so. All right, you say, is everyone ready? Talks ready to go, she looks to her sister who nods. Okay, now as for our new friend, come up front with me, I've got a lot of questions for you. Right you are, mate. Nice. So we're making some progress. Come on. All right, she's been at the gates for a few minutes now. It's impossible to hear what they're saying from this distance. But finally, her calm composure cracks and she yells at a passive opponent. I'm not leaving my people out here to bake in the sun. He says something, gestures at the gates, then heads inside the town with a short, guilty glance at the convoy. Dude, you dick. The woman Jess is arguing with wears the woman Jess is arguing with wears a white jacket with nary a stain or crease. She shields her golden eyes from the sun and pitches her voice to carry to you and anyone else who may have heard Jess help us. As I said, Meredith has had an influx of people seeking aid. You of all people know how much it costs to house a population, let alone feed them. Miss Brown, your friends appear to have missed the line over there for other siders. I suggest you all get back in that line before I ask my guards to put you there. Uh, we have information, we'll trade it for the entity, entry, uh, we're not other siders, we're your neighbours. Please, we're tra we've travelled so far and we're so, so tired. Fuck the line, our home was destroyed, we need to get inside. Why is there even a line? I thought Meridian welcomed travellers from all over. Uh, we're your neighbours. Everyone from outside Meridian is to other side. It's the only way we can ensure we're treating everyone fairly. Who cares? West only is under threat from forces with 10 times as much firepower as us. And I've sat in this line for two days on the off chance Governor Smith would decide, don't, don't speak to me, wait your turn like everyone else. Is it far be it for me to rupture such self-serving delusions by actually having a conversation with you? Governor, who captures our attention, we haven't come empty handed. We've got specialists in our convoy, farmers, medics and mechanic. You know Madonella, the scouts from Bally Bally Hall, an old mate here. Uh, what's his name, that guy, etc. Okay. Go on, introduce yourself. 
hired gun before things went to shit, I'd just become a hired gun for the scouts at Bally Bally Hall. I'm a hired gun ready to do your bidding for some cash. I'll do that for one. Anyone who's good enough of a shot to join the scouts, scouts will have a busy future ahead of them in Meriden. What you need to know is we didn't come empty handed, like Mick said. I must say, Mick, you do have quite the group here. I can see why Jess was so adamant I let you in. I'd love to help you, but there are plenty of others in this line with similar skills. When it comes down to it, what it comes down to is whether or not you can support yourselves without relying on handouts. If you guarantee that you won't be a burden on our already strained economy, we could let you in, on a professional basis, of course. Anyone who grabs more than the bare essentials, bring it here. The governor wants proof we can pay our own way. Um, I'll help keep the peace. If you can calm them down, I'll allow you into Meriden. Good luck. Deal with the protesters outside. Okay, so... What do you want, douche? If it isn't the line cutter, you should be ashamed of yourself. Sell off, mate. Everyone, please, I met this killer before. They saved my boy's life. Let's land on here. Where's that nice woman from before? She's gone, kiddo. Some of these people have been waiting for weeks to get inside, and you have the gaulet to cut in front. You should be standing with us. There's enough of us here to storm the damn place and make it our own. Think critically here. Who will help Westonia if you attack Meriden? You want to stand a chance, you'd probably be treated with a bit more respect if you weren't being so hostile. You're a fool if you think Angela respects anyone in this land. She only lets people in if they promise to vote for her in the next election. Oh, I like it. Political. We got people dropping like flies every day. We had to bury one of the kids last night, but Meriden's wondrous leader doesn't give a shit about kids dying. Blah, blah. Uh, your feelings are very clear, but you don't need to cause a situation that endangers all of these other people. Yeah. Fuck Angela and fuck you too. If Connor had brought this matter to our attention sooner, we might already have, not, have been able to act. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to make the seriousness of his situation known. We'll bring him inside Meriden and listen to his demands once we've settled as far as that poor doomed town broke them. That's the closest I'm going to get to an apology, isn't it? I'll take the guarantee, but you better get the rest of these people somewhere safe too and soon. I'm satisfied with what you've shown me today. Mick Meriden is open to your people. You and I will speak of your request for aid later, understood? Of course, thank you. Heads inside without another word. Yeah, you completed chapter one. All right. He heads inside without another word and the rest of you trail in his wake. So it's chapter one. I think there's four chapters in this game. So let's say that's taken us around three hours, I guess. Looking at about, what, 12 hour experience. If it stays the same, of course, it could be very, very different as we move into this. There's a good chance the chapter one was just kind of like a character introduction, I guess. Cool. Haven't seen any combat yet, really, either. We did the training mission, but that was about it. So I'm sure that's going to start picking up from here on out. Walks towards you slowly, his head droops, and his once immaculately pressed jacket now disheveled. He exhales, then looks up at you. Okay. As much as I'd like to take the credit for all of this, I feel like I dropped the ball. You and Jess did good work out there. Thanks for offering to be a dog's body for the governor. Free labor's a catnip for leaders. I never tended to help myself. Here's the deal, I'm going to try to talk to Governor Smith into helping us retake Brockton. You're welcome to get the lay of the land first, but if you could meet me at Smith House sooner rather than later, I'd appreciate the backup. Sounds like a plan. I'll see if I can catch the Governor before she gets bogged down in affairs of state. She's got a lot going on right now, but Brockton is a priority. It has to be. You'll be laughing at how many people need some help. Oh. A lot of the pop-ups on screen are a little bit quick. Like I think something came up then on the left saying like, meet Mick, but I couldn't even read it. Uh, hush up now, DJ, or your friends will know that you doubted them. This old man speaks with a twinkle in his eye. You made it. I was sure Angela was going to keep you in the line out of spite. Um, I use my charm on Somehow, I doubt that. I'll see you in quarter then. Angela's obviously not going to give me the time of day. Stop by any time, even if you don't manage to find it. Yes, Conk. Find what? Asked me to find a treasure he lost in Meriden. He said it's not worth anything to anyone but him, even if it looks a bit swanky. But market expensive. One half of the treasure is a black rectangle about the size of my palm, and the other is a white plastic rope that slots into the ends. Eh. Journal. I don't really care about that one. Let's do this. Meet me outside the governor's HQ. Cool. Um, a map here. That's the front entrance. This is a convoy. Okay, so where the hell is Mick then? Oh, 
Oh, we've got more to spend. I think combat's coming up, so I'm going to go strength. And then with these, let's go. I really do want to make sure I'm ready. So drunken master, liquid courage, and then leadership. I really like that. John, Jess. Okay, so there, John. Me and Mika have given us HQ, so where the hell is that? Fender. I'm gonna guess it's gotta be this way, right? Yeah, I saw him running off this direction. I know it could be an animation, but. Ella, mad. This is on the base of operations. It's pretty swanky. How is this one? And um, hey, here we go. Governor's HQ. And I'm telling you, Governor, if we don't retake Brockton first, there'll be nothing left there for either of us. As I've repeatedly said, I can't afford to spare anyone to help you rebuilding efforts at this time. No matter how big or in your case small, especially if the raiders are more spirited in their attacks than usual, that is unless. Fine, I'll bite, unless what? I believe your lackey here could assist me with something, with your permission, of course. Um. Sure, Mick, and I can spare a few to, uh, to see about helping you out. Fine, but if you don't return me on time, I'll let that one. I might ask what you think of that. I'm um, ask why you think that, Governor. Anyone willing to put in the hard work and earn their stripes in Meridian is a useful asset. I want to see what else he's capable of beyond his area of expertise. Um, your assessment is accurate. But most importantly, you both owe me, so I don't think you've, you're really in any position to refuse. I think that's fair. Borrow away then. Just remember, there are lives at stake. My people can help Meridian survive the next Raider onslaught before Brookton becomes your priority. You may think you are safe behind your walls, but if you believe only one thing, believe that you are not prepared for what's headed your way. No one who hasn't seen it could be. And most of who did see it are gone. Great, I'll touch base for you later, Mick. It's a bit dramatic, wasn't it? Now let's discuss your future out of this damn heat. I'm ready to see what other skills you may be hiding underneath that unassuming exterior. Shows inside without waiting to see if you plan to follow. All right, let's go. Cool. Is she gonna make me kill people or is this gonna be different? I do like the graphics a lot. Definitely does give me that Disco Elysium vibe. Thanks for coming, Brookton. No need to sit. As you can tell, I have a few things on my mind besides cleaning up after a town that's already been raised to the ground. So I'll make this quick. The election for the next governor of Meriden is approaching as the incumbent. I intend to win that election or retain my position. My only competition is Malcolm Hogan, a weak-willed imbecile with a penchant for rabble rousing. So I'm confident in my success, but I leave nothing to chance. I'll let you cut through the red tape, keeping you out of Meriden, because I see a way to solve all our problems at the same time. All you have to do is tell the leader if each hours you are under my employ to assist them however they see fit. In return, once I'm elected, I'll divert what help I can towards Brookton. Interested? Um, sure, I'll help. Better the devil, you know, right? Or I won't help further your agenda. That's a tough one. I'll have to think about it. Take as much time as you need, as much time as you need before you walk out that door, that is. After that, I make no assurances. What do I do? I don't like her. Uh, I'm gonna take the risk, let's leave. She seems evil. Oh. This isn't good. The bag is removed from your head. You see a moderately handsome, more than moderately tough, and I know moderately about it armed woman standing before you. She stares at you for several seconds before she speaks. 
Now's a good time to maybe start asking yourself some questions such as, am I in the mood to be quiet and listen up? But then again, you can ask yourself, do I feel like being eviscerated by a pack of mongrels? I have a feeling those questions might be rhetorical. She's not bullshitting us. She's capable and very willing to hurt us. Jeez, mad, do you want to shoot her or fuck her? We'll see. Enough whispering, you lot come here. As you walk towards the cruise leader, you notice a lot of movement in the shadows, figures drawing closer too, but staying just out of the light, a pack, like she said. My name's Pris, some folks call me the Empress, but I don't really go for titles. She looks comfortable, even relaxed. So tell me, who are you? Um, who are we? Look, one minute we were talking to the governor, the next we were dragged away by your Mongols. We're victims here. Um, we're a small part of us left to Brockton. Heard about Brookton, my crew just brought some scrap back from there yesterday. Sounds like it used to be a nice place, might even be nice and that's filled with corpses. Don't you fucking dare. Shame you bothered to dig graves from, it might have deterred the dingoes, but my people are persistent and not too picky when it comes to free meals. You ate them? Waste not one that. You'd know that if you were a winner like me. Damn. The fucking reason all this works. Without me, the dew farmers wouldn't have the plastic they need for Meridian's water. Without me, the emu farmers wouldn't be able to make fuel from bird shits. Without me, the drunk dickheads in the gala wouldn't have their precious pokey machines. Do we made the wrong, right choice to start working with her? Uh, you like reckon you're so now that you're in Meridian? This place is a web of lies and bullshit. Me and my pack make use of what falls out or gets thrown out. Angela, meanwhile, is very much the spider in this metaphor. You pissed her off and she asked me to teach you a lesson. She wants to put the fear of me into you. So what do you say? Are you sufficiently afraid? <sighs> he lied, terrified. See, the best part about this gig is that it doesn't matter if you're having a go at me or genuinely pissing in your boots. You mess up again, my face will be the last thing you see. So please fuck it up. I could use a chance to really let loose. Get them out of my sight. Interesting. So did I make a good choice or a bad choice? I feel like I made a good choice. The question is though, the warmth she showed you earlier has completely evaporated. Screw you. I hope your chat with a certain empress has clarified what it means to define me, but so we're both crystal clear on my expectations moving forward. Know this, I have allowed you into my town, and as a result, I expect you and your friends to be loyal to me, not married in me. I also expect you to do as I ask. I have an election to win. Anyone who endangers that endeavour has no place in. So tell me, are you going to do as I ask and assist the houses under my employ? It's a simple task, and the rewards far away the efforts. Um, if it means having the people of Brooklyn, fine. No, you had your fuck threat on us when we didn't do what you wanted. That's not the way to treat people. Screw it, I'm going to put rebelling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Are we going to end up in that area again? That's cool, I like the fact that you can push back. Ah, crap. Bags were moved to your head to no one surprised stands before you again. To your surprise, however, she looks even angrier than she did before. Cool. Didn't we just have this conversation? I distinctly remember having this conversation. I remember you promising you wouldn't do anything to piss Angela off again. Yet here we are. Now what the bloody hell am I supposed to do here? Angela wants you gone, so I'm supposed to make you gone. It says the ball similarly weighing up our options. Thing is, we usually get people a little more helpless than you lot. You notice we didn't take your weapons. Maybe that's how we're going to meet, or maybe it's exactly what Angela wants. So here's what I'm thinking. You and some of my grunts have a crack at it. Don't get me wrong. This is a life or death situation, but I'm going to execute my, excuse myself, give you better odds of surviving. If Angela wants to kill me, she'll have to come after me herself. And even if you straight up murder these bozos, you still owe me for letting you live. Uh, see you in Arda if you don't end up on my plate. You know what I like. Bring it to me fresh. Hey, we're doing some combat. Along your journey, there will be fights that you and your party cannot flee from. Consider your options and party composition before deciding to fight. Okay. I mean... Okay. I'm gonna go... Bloody hell, it's a small map, isn't it? Over here. And 
10. Come on. Dead perfect. He is poisoned. Okay, and turn. And turn. Why oh, you failed? Well, that was embarrassing. There's, there's no way for me to bloody hide. So I was too close, so he got to take a swing at me. It's crap, okay. Well, at least you got a hit on me. Healing, when in combat, you can use healing items to heal yourself and your companions. Now, put a guest. To heal, you must select the healing item on the radial wheel, then use left click when hovering over yourself close enough to use them. I don't think I need to. So look at that, just quickly. I see it. Oh, healing light. Is that it? Yeah, that's just okay. So let's just skip out of that. Let's go to you. Nine of action points, let's reload there. Love it. Kill an enemy with SR98 at maximum range. Okay. In turn. Nice. And then we don't need to heal anyway. Can we go back? Stab him. No more attacks in my. Missed. These guys are weak. And turn, and then for you, let's just heal just so we can say we've done it. Fusion Sunday, mischief in combat, heal. There we go. Oh crap, I heard the wrong person. You can't heal yourself by the looks of things. Interesting. Okay, that's fine. We're going to be fine anyway. You suck. And that should be getting my crap. I need a reload. Keep on getting too close to them. And turn. That should be good. Cool. Let's pick some pockets, shall we? Take all some big ass X. You've probably got the most interesting stuff, I imagine. Tingle coin and a pistol. And then you take all. What's this over here? Take it all. Thank you as well. I do like having the tab button so I can see what the hell's going on. Nice. Get out of here. So what happens now? Takes one like you and recalls bloody hell. Who do you have a running with? Tell me later once this sham of a public appearance is over. Westonia itself is at stake. We need Meredin's help right now, or everyone there will die. As one of our closest allies in trade, of course we don't want Westonia to fall, but you require we send over a hundred people to follow you into the flames. It's just not feasible. Even Malcolm would have difficulty justifying such a preposterous ask, especially when it would have leave Meredin practically defenseless. Practically defenseless? I don't know what silly Governor Smith is living in, but we here in Meriden know how to hold our own. 
If I was in charge, I'd send 200 people to help Westonia and you wouldn't hear me whinging about a lack of manpower while these poor, starving wretches all outside our walls, begging for a chance to prove themselves, I bloody well let them in. Malcolm, do you think I enjoy turning people away? Do you think I do it for fun? I keep others out so that our community remains fed and safe, so you can keep your cushy home. I regret the situation we both find ourselves in deeply, I do, but if Meriden offers aid at any at all, you have to meet me halfway here. Angela, I can't. I can't believe I wasted all this time away from my home, my family, all to try to get help from the saddest sexist shit in Westars. He laughs weakly. You see my side, don't you? You lost everything to these fucking raiders. Help these so-called leaders to understand. Um, appeal to Hogan. Can't you do something for him? Well, I'm not the governor. Not yet. I say we can help our Westonian friends not by pulling our guards from the walls in an untenable defence, but by bringing Westonia's people inside our walls. We can't do it for free, but perhaps if they'd agree to a period of indentured servitude, like many of our own fine townsfolk have done, we could see our way to food and board for their people. We can draw up contracts in the morning, help us help you. Can't believe this, you enslave the unborn children of people who owe you a debt and you want us to opt in, that's your offer of help. You open your mouth and I'll fucking deck you, punch you. You think you've got a problem with people outside your walls now? Wait until all your neighbors are clamoring at the gates. You'll have to choose between a massacre and an invasion. If it'll help, Brookton will step aside and give you our place here in Meriden. Uh, you have to prove the town will be better off with you than without you, that's all. Sacrifice hundreds of people for your little town. Um, what about our old folks? What about our babies? They've got no use to Meriden. You just let them die. We're not that cruel, mate. We'd look out for them. Just means the rest of your community will need to work a little harder to make up the deficit. Slow down, please. I haven't endorsed Mr. Hogan's solution. We need to evaluate our resources and whether they can bear the strain of adding Westonia's population to the mix. So we're stuck between idolists who think death is freedom from tyranny and money-grubbing assholes who want to profit off our misery. A hundred years of mutual assistance pissed away in ten seconds. Your city's gonna burn, and you'll have no one but yourselves to blame. I'm wanting to hear your insults, but I won't let you fret on Meriden. Guards stepping forward. Uh... This will definitely mean he has to the piss. Spoken like someone who's never had to make a difficult decision. Guys, please escort the Westonian elsewhere. He's free to leave the city or find a gutter to pass out in, as long as it's not anywhere near me. I had a lot about Meriden as a kid, you know, how it was this big safe place where kids could run for ages and never reach the other side of town. But now I see Meriden for what it really is, a breeding ground for the most heartless, gutless wonders I've ever had the misfortune to meet. One day I hope you're in my shoes watching a bunch of slow show ponies parade around the yard or whatever you think you care about burns to the ground. And when you are, I'll laugh. I'll laugh my fucking ass off. I feel like an ass they say ass, not ass. But anyway. I'm sorry you all had to see that. In future, I'll encourage Mr. McCabe to bring his complaints to me in private. Now let's give the people what they want. Malcolm, would you like to select the topic or would you prefer first right of rebuttal? Topic. That poor man's outburst is a direct result of you treating the Brooklyn survivors so favourably while letting everyone else rot in the sun. Um, not so favourably, Governor Smith tried to have us killed. <laughs> uh, is that what you thought she meant? They ran into my cleaning lady. I know, I know. Luxury most in Meredith can't, Meredith can't afford. She has a habit of saying she cleans up my messes. Guilty as charged, but clearly not the kind of messes you're used to dealing with. Smile. What is wrong with you people? Westonia's a fox with all, with all without your help. And here you are bickering like an old married couple who stayed together to raise the kids. We came to you for help. Don't tell me this is what you're doing instead. Um, so they're not going to help us. They never will. I hear your frustration. I second it, but first we must address the elephant in the room. You're absolutely right, Mick. We need to dispense with these petty arguments and address what I know our dear Hogan would most desperately love to address. We need to dispense with these and address what I know our dear Hogan would most desperately love to address. I recovered a survivor from the plane crash and have learned that he hails from Calgary. I've been speaking to him privately to learn up their plans and see if they know anything about the threats that currently face Bostonia. What were you thinking? Calgary could obliterate us without a second thought and you took one of them hostage. We've got to find out what they want and first. You poor narrow-minded buffoon. There are more things in heaven than earth. Let's go. The prisoner has escaped. Okay. Completed. Need to get rid of this active quest. 
And Ray opens his hand to reveal a small metal sphere. Uh oh. Oh. I like the cutscenes, the, the writing's been really good, but um, I'd love to see more images, it was just one still image. Alright, let's get through this. Chasing out a low-lying mist with little enthusiasm, it feels like it should be impossible to breathe, your air flows freely in and out of your lungs. That's sad. Ollie. Okay, let's. Trisha, we'll slip well. We must discuss today how we plan to address this recent change in our circumstances. Dr. Taylor, what is your prognosis for Mick and the magician? Mick's got a brain blade. I'm doing what I can, but it isn't much. There's no telling when he will wake up, if he wakes up, or whether he will retain any of his previous cognitive function. Your magician friend should be fine, no swelling or bruising that I can see. Seems like he just overexerted himself. He'll need a few days to recover, but he should be awake soon enough. Very well. We have to wait for answers. I understand. In the meantime, there's the matter of the escaped Calgary agent to address. Can't always be in Calgary inside the bank. I suggest he be your first port of call moving forward. You can, in his words, split open the bush, hush silence of the day. Mick is dying and you want to talk about some bloke who you let escape. Um... Mick's not dying is going to be fine, right, sir? I never said that a brain bleed is serious, but anything that causes stress to his immune system isn't going to help, so kindly keep your voices down. Keeping Scott Measure locked inside the bank vault was a tactical oversight. If the device he provided to Kana was any indication of Calgary's power. Tactical oversight? Mate, it was bloody short-sighted. They could wipe us off the map in a split second if they knew we kidnapped and interrogated one of their own. Um, Save so the moral outrage is in the campaign trail. She's the one who treated everyone like a war that she's fighting single-handed. Sounds like you guys are in a real pickle. Mick needs help first, though. I'm sure DJ would have something in Korra to help him somehow. So I said it herself. She's tapped out, and so am I. It's time to call in the big guns. Um, sounds like Korra's a go, then. I've got something cross with some tech still working from before. Could be worth a peek. 
If we all just forgotten about Cole, I love Mick like a dad, yeah, but Cole's been missing since the attack and no one's done a fucking thing to find him. He could be hurt or dead in a ditch somewhere, and if he is dead, he'd want us to have his stuff. Send someone else for the medicine, the little man leads us. I want to hear from him. The line of succession is clear. Mick brought Alex to me as someone who could solve my problems and get Brooke to help it needs. Otherwise, I will also accept the opinion of Dr. Taylor, despite my desire to capture Scott Measure and bring him to justice for this vicious attack. Mick must be our first priority. Measure can wait. Um... So, what do you think? Mick is my patient, so that's the DJ. I'd try Corda first. Um, Alright, let's go. Party gained 4 hours experience, rest away. Resting allows your party to regain some health and recover from some of effects. Some locations will charge you to rest, and the amount of health restored can vary. Resting passing passes 8 in-game hours. Waiting will pass however many hours it takes to change between day and night, but does not heal any HP. Some characters and quest events might only appear at night. Okay. You can access the overall map and begin exploring the outbacks at the compass barn or press O to open it. Cool, we're getting into a lot more detail now then, haven't we? You must gather your mates before venturing forth. Select four of your companions. Okay, so... I don't want to... I'm just going to click anyone. Open overall map. I want to see what this looks like. Okay, quarter is where we're going to be going. Um, I think let's just stick with Merritt and yeah, confirm fast travel back. So that's basically wrapped up chapter one and what a little bit of chapter two at this point. Um, story's really something to get going. We've got attacks, we've got all sorts of different weird forces. Um, we'll come back to you in a second. Let me open my journal. This is done. Find out where Cole is. Talk to Kanama McCabe inside the Merlin Bank. Get med medicine from Southern Christ. Travel Cole with DJ and your party to get medicine from Mick. That's what we're going to do next. But for now, I think we'll end it there today. Um, that's chapter one complete, though. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. Really enjoying this one. Curious to see where it goes. We've had kind of one battle in that first, what, three hours or so, I think it was. So it's definitely going to be a, a longer game. I think there's four chapters from what I can see in Steam Achievements. Um, but yeah, really interesting, really like the world, and yeah, curious to see where it goes. Um, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, it's always appreciated, and yeah, I'll see you all on the next one. Thanks all.